Brooklyn ha is um, remaining more multicultural, but one of our concerns is that, and something we try to be a part of the solution rather than the problem around, is um, how gentrification is literally uh, whitewashing Brooklyn and erasing a lot of the very things that have made Brooklyn so cool and appealing to people. Right. So of course people have It's still really cool and appealing exactly. to people as they erase it. Right. And so it's like the music and the um, communities, especially in like in the neighborhoods like in Bed-Stuy and Crown Heights where we live and work, um, uh, a lot of African diaspora Caribbean communities whose music and food and art and uh, community activism have shaped Brooklyn right. um, and who are being displaced and where there are like whole strips of Brooklyn that um, all the businesses opening up make it look like another neighborhood in Brooklyn. Right, uh, that literally is devoid of any culture. Right, and so it's like, why do people want that monoculture? Right and yeah. to have everybody be the same. So one of the things that we're doing is making sure that we're partnering with uh, local organizations to who work to create um, sustainable food systems for the longtime residents of Brooklyn. Um, so we have a program called Harvest Justice where we help clients uh, not only feed themselves but think about, oh, you know, local food, healthy, organic, food that sustains you, food that helps you celebrate isn't just important for people with higher Means income. to pay for it, right. Yeah, so we're working with Northeast Brooklyn Housing Development Corporation to raise money for their um, youth cooking and leadership program. And also we um, do whatever we can to kind of make sure to have pop-ups. I think also one of the things that we focus on um, just in terms of like our business practices um, is prioritizing clients who have a priority in working with people in the community and expanding the arts and working with education um, and um, different systems within Brooklyn that we want to grow and you know participate in. Um, so that's one of the things that we do is we prioritize working with those types of organizations as well versus just the higher paying clients that we receive typically from like the Hamptons or Manhattan um, who pay a lot of our bills um, but you know obviously aren't the only people who deserve to have food that makes them feel good and empowered and connected with their loved ones in community. So that's something that we really prioritize and pay attention to. Um, and then that's something that translates within our client base. I think you can definitely see too if you just compare us to other catering companies. Our client base, our client base is very varied mm -hmm. um, in terms of socioeconomic status, race, um, sexual orientation, everything. Um, we have a very diverse client base, and I think it's because we prioritize community building and cultural building um, versus just the bottom line. Mm -hmm.